Hello everyone and welcome back to Football Manager 2018 and the second part of this experiment where we flip and restart European football across about six or seven major, major leagues. I mean, all of the big leagues really in Europe have been turned upside down and we're going to go forward a few years today and have a look at which teams have done well, which of the big teams are starting to climb back up the leagues and which leagues across the world are doing well in the Champions League, the Europa League and the Club World Championship because I think some lesser known teams might be winning that competition to a European audience at least. Um, now before we go on I just want to address a few questions that came out of the last part of this experiment. Um, some people didn't understand why the finance had been removed from the game and that's because um, quite frankly the big teams always fire straight back up so what this does is just neuter their ability to do it as quickly as they usually do now the big clubs still have their big sponsorship deals especially the Premier League teams they are still bringing in hundreds of millions of pounds every year even though they're not in the Premier League so they will re rebuild their team quite quickly the other big question was about um, how teams in the Spanish leagues only have one promotion whereas the English teams could have five or six before they get back to the big time um, and again the reason for that comes down to money the Spanish teams don't have the inherent sponsorship deals on a same level that the English teams do the Premier League pay structure is so that even the teams that are in there now like Whitehawk have just received about a hundred million pounds to spend on players which even Barcelona and Real Madrid don't get if they win the league so this does just balance out a little bit better across Europe and I think you'll continue to see the English teams are going to always dominate in this but hopefully the Spanish Italian and French teams will be able to compete a little bit more despite that so I hope that addresses some questions let me know if you've got any more down there and of course the other big thing that I missed last time was I said Millwall had no big players they did have Harry Kane in the team which is even more appropriate given he just scored two goals for England in the World Cup but there you go sometimes you make mistakes so let's go forward now three years into the future and the thing we're keeping an eye on here are the major transfers um, of the biggest players who are still out on free contracts and also which big teams start to reclaim their natural place in the league structure but of course before we do go forward make sure to drop a like on the video if you are enjoying this experiment and want to see another part let me know in the comments if you've got ideas for new experiments and always, as always, hit that subscribe button so you get the latest updates to this experiment as they come out in the next few days. Well, we are now five whole years into the future. And the first thing that I want to do is just show you what the biggest leagues are across Europe five years into the future. You can see at the top the Bundesliga, the biggest league in the world quickly followed by La Liga but then in third place it is the Greek Super League which means that the Greek teams must be doing well in the European competitions and then it's the Austrian, Swiss and then the Italian League with the Premier League all the way down in seventh place having dropped from fourth to seventh so things are definitely getting shaken up with the Israeli Premier League above the French League the whole order of Europe has been completely upended as a result of this. Um, now, where we're we going to start here, I think, will have to be with the French League, Ligue 1, which is the big one that we left off before. If we have a look through the stages of this, going back to where we started, uh, and you saw that Cannes won at the French League. The following season, Rantz won it with Harve in third. Um, further down the league, not seeing too many of the big giants coming back, but then you've got Len in there as well. Lyon also up there. No sign of PSG just yet, um, but I'm sure they will bounce back quite soon. Um, again, Cannes winning the title with Rance just behind them. Then Lyon took the title, and the next season to come, there is still no sign of PSG or of AS Monaco in there, and they're actually not in the second league either. Um, and in the French National, they are gone from that as well. So maybe we're looking at a very long time before Paris Saint-Germain or Monaco are able to come back into the league. So it'll be interesting to see how their successors do. The likes of Cannes and Rance, who've done very well in the previous few years. Now, if we have a look at the transfers in the French League, going back to the start, obviously there are an awful lot of free transfers coming in. Big players coming back to the French League as well. The likes of Paul Pogba, who went to Cannes, which is why they're doing so well. They also picked up Varane and Griezmann. Um, so Cannes definitely showing why they're at the top there. Keita Balde in there as well. Anthony Lopez. They have signed some excellent, excellent players over the years. The following season, the big money not really being spent at all, actually. So once again, 
the free transfers will have dominated. Um, and you can see here these teams who obviously have just come back into the league structure do the majority of the signings, but there are a lot of players here who are still on free transfers and moving to various different clubs, but they're having to repopulate pretty much the entire team, which is why this is happening. I was just going to have a look for the likes of Rance and Cons. You can see that they brought in Debushi, uh, Saeed's in there, Koulibaly as well, uh, Gibson. If we go down, um, I must have missed Cons at some point, but... Already you can see some of those players that were still on their free transfers picking up um, those out-of-contract players. You can see Carnes here this time. They have signed Harry Kane from Millwall on a free transfer. Millwall losing out massively there. Um, but you can see they lost Jibril Sidibe to Shangang. But they have signed an awful lot of players. So the money is now starting to be sent as Cannes are getting that money come in. Real Madrid also popping up here with some signings, which is encouraging for the La Liga Um and then you can see Rance with a big team spending money the following season. And finally, we see some big transfers here. The Greek League especially signing Christian Eriksen from Cairns for £54 million. And then Cairns reinvested that money in quite a few other good players out there. Luke Shaw moving to Charlton here from Lenz. Um, Ben Gibson seems to be popping up an awful lot. He's just moved to York. I do want to just have a quick look at the AS Cannes team. As the dominant team in French football, they've got Luis Enrique in charge. And this time I have noticed Harry Kane as the key player. If we look at their senior squad, though, I'm sure it is littered with talent. And as you can see, they are the new PSG. Harry Kane, Rigani, Umtiti, De Bruyne, Marshall, Kai Havertz, a great wonder kid in the game. Sewell's in there, Malcolm. Eden Hazard, who's now 31 as well. This is a sensational team. They've also got Varane, Pogba and Griezmann, who are worth nothing, um, possibly, because their contracts are about to expire. Um, but what a team they've built up, and they must be winning Champions League titles. But then they are down in ninth place in the competition, rep, uh, competition rankings, so maybe they aren't doing that well in Europe. Now, if we have a look at the Premier League next, which is one of the lower-ranked um, leagues in the world, as you can see before, Whitehawk won the league. Then it was York just pipping Salford to the top. York, we have seen pop up from a few transfers. And then Blackburn Rovers have returned to the top of the Premier League, winning the title for just a second time. York took it the following season. Uh, then Charlton managed to come up and win it ahead of Blackburn. A couple of points in that one. But you can see the likes of Portsmouth up here as well. So some... Familiar names popping up into the top division. If we drop down and have a look at who's settled in which leagues, you can see in the championship we've already got Manchester United in 14th place, or alphabetically 14th place, in the championship. So those of you who said that it was a massive disadvantage are very quickly being proven wrong here because United firing up the leagues and I am sure will be challenging for the title soon. Uh, now if we look at League One, then you can see FC United are there. Uh, Man City in 14th place, not far behind their City rivals. Uh, West Bromwich Albion at the bottom of that table. Arsenal are in Sky Bet League 2, taking a little bit longer to get up there. There will be a drip feed of Premier League teams into the league structure, one every year, because only one team gets promoted from the league that they're in. Um, but then as they get into the major league system, you will start to see a bit of a flood of teams coming out. So if we just have a look at the conference here, um, or the Vanarama National League, West Ham United are in there now. Um, again, a few Premier League teams in the Vanarama National League North. I think they've probably rebalanced this, which means there will be a couple of Premier League teams this season getting promoted out of these divisions. So you can see already they are making the comeback. They will be there soon. I imagine United will be in the Premier League in the next episode. If we look at the transfers um, across England, or the English Premier League anyway, uh, you can see... Obviously, the first season there. The second season, not much money being spent. They have got the budget now, but it's still just going to take them so long to be able to bring players in. And there are too many there for me to really go through. The following season, the money gets ramped up again because their budgets get a little bit bigger and the financial fair play uh, allows them to spend so much more money. Trent Alexander-Arnold, the big transfer there from Kaiserslautern to Peterborough. But again, you can see Real Madrid popping up here. I'm sure we'll see them soon. Um, and again... The new teams popping up, but Man United there with a £10 million transfer. They are flexing their muscles already. And you can see so far this season, um, not an awful lot of money spent, but it is starting to get a little bit better. Bearing in mind, that's the very start of the transfer window as well. So the Premier League starting to return to shape. The big winners at the moment, if we just have a look at the Premier League's 
uh, past winners. You can see Charlton up there. York have won it twice now. Blackburn as well, finishing first or second the last three seasons. So the Premier League very quickly climbing up the rankings. We'll go through Serie A a little bit quicker. Um, so if we have a look at the stages here, um, you can see first season Benevento won the league. The following season it was Frosinone who took it. Uh, Lecce are in there. Frosinone won it for the next season as well. Lecce there as well. Parma, Empoli in the top division. Foggia managed to win it the following year. I'm just keeping an eye out for the teams that are coming up here because I imagine this will happen a little bit quicker in the Italian league. But you can see again there, Parma win the league. No sign of the major, major teams in Italy. If we have a look in Serie B at the league table here, you can see Palermo are in there, Cesano are in there. But again, none of the major teams have managed to get out of the non-league structure just yet and get back into the top division. And this is where it could be a real struggle for them. Um, now, if we have a look at the Spanish La Liga next, which is currently sitting in second place, then you can see here Real Madrid are in the top division, but there is no sign of Barcelona as things stand. So if we have a look at how these seasons have progressed, you can see the first season Real Oviedo took the league, Barcelona B in 11th place, um, and then Real Madrid entered the system, finished in 17th place, Cadiz winning it a couple of years in a row, um, Real Madrid 13th, and then jumping right up to 5th place, Barcelona B finally relegated alongside Real Madrid B, and Real Madrid in the most recent season finishing in 6th place, Cadiz picking up all the titles at the moment, but that uh, Ma that Real Madrid ascension is continuing and will continue for some time. Cadiz at the moment, the big team in Spanish football. We've got Andrea Bellotti and Pablo Insua in their team um, and are performing very, very well. So they will be ones to watch going forward. Now, finally, if we have a look at the Bundesliga, which has been the most successful one so far, you can see that Real Madrid are in this league. And if we go back to the start... Um, you can see it was won by Carl Zwerch. I've got no idea how you pronounce that. Darmstadt won it the following season. Um, and you've got Munster, Arlen and Jena getting relegated. Nuremberg are up there. They've done well in the past with experiments like this. The same with Ingolstadt. Um, Nuremberg winning it again. And then getting up to the most recent season. Bayern Munich only just getting promoted. Still no sign of the likes of Dortmund, who are still fighting it down in the second league. But I'm sure they'll be back at some point soon so you can see a lot of these teams are starting to come back but because of the way that not all of the non-leagues are loaded it will take a lot more and be an awful lot of luck really for teams like Barcelona if they're going to manage to get back into this you can see here though that the Greek Super League have done very very well um, managing to come up and they've currently got well, they're out of the game, but because they might be doing well in the European competitions, that boosts the league's reputation. And if the leagues aren't loaded, it means that the clubs in there have their reputation decide how good they are when they take on teams that are loaded, if, if that makes sense. Um, so a higher reputation league leads to higher reputation clubs, and it generates players of that value. So this team, for example, the best team in Greece at the moment has some great out players. These great out players are going to be four star, five star players because that's where the club is. And you can see they've got so many very, very good players in their team anyway, like uh, Christian Eriksen, Wallace is in there who's a good um, youth player, Van Ginkel, Pazalic, Diego Lorente, Kalazanak, Ben Yedder is in there as well. Some very, very good players. And with the great out players as well, they are going to be performing very well across the European competition. So let's take a look at the now with the Europa uh, League up first, the Champions Cups at the top there. So maybe we'll have to start with that and then drop down one league. Um, if we just kick off from the quarterfinals in this competition, you can see young boys, Hapel are in there, Basel, Dinamo. These are not loaded teams who are doing so well. In the semis, it was Basel, and Hapoel who got to the final, and it was won by an Israeli team, possibly for the first time ever. I can't think of any other ones winning the Europa League. The following season, uh, we have got an Italian team in there, Juve Stabia beating Catania. Uh, young boys in there again, PAOK making their first appearance that we've seen, uh, Rapid Vienna in there as well. In the semis, it was young boys and PAOK, again, two teams um, not loaded, and it was Pauk. I don't know if it's Pauk or P-A-O-K. I always hear people pronounce it both ways, so maybe somebody can let me know the way to pronounce that team. Um, and if we go again to the following season, we can see Olympiacos this time knocked out, Tarragona 
one of the Spanish teams, three Spanish teams in here now. So this league quickly coming up. Not too many English teams at the minute. Austria Japan doing well. Two Austrian teams going through as well to join the two Spanish teams. And in the semi-finals, it was Sporting Gijon and Rapid Vienna who managed to go through. And in the final, it was Rapid Vienna who took the title home. Another unloaded league. Now, finally, we're seeing the English teams do well. Maybe because they've got the European places back if they've jumped up the competition rankings. But Peterborough, Charlton and Blackburn all making the semi-finals. Lugo, the Spanish team in there as well. More established leagues and loaded leagues appearing at this point because they're starting to catch up again. And Blackburn actually made the final this year alongside Lugo of Spain. And it was Blackburn who won the Europa League and European glory for them. Now if we go and take a look at the Champions League and have a look at... Um, where we left off before 2018-19 and take a look from the quarterfinal onwards you can see here Real Oviedo are in there, uh, Pauka in there again, uh, Kant's in there, we know they're one of the best teams in the world and Salzburg up there too. In the semi-finals it was Kant and Salzburg who went through and in the final Salzburg took home the Champions League, I'm pretty sure they took it home the previous season as well, they did so two times Champions League winners now uh, Salzburg from Austria. Uh, if we go to the following season, Panathiakos actually knocked out Salzburg. Basel took out Olympiakos, Austria Vienna went through, and Nuremberg from Germany, the only loaded league left in. At the semi final stage, Nuremberg did manage to go through with Panathiakos. Is it going to be the German team or the Greek team? It's the German team. They beat Panathiakos on penalties to take home their first Champions League title. Um, the following season, Pauk in there again with Nuremberg, Benevento and Darmstadt. Starting to see a little bit of a shift here with the more established leagues doing well. Um, in the semi-finals, Nuremberg and Darmstadt making the final. Nuremberg won it last year and they win it this year as well. The Champions League is going in braces at the moment. And the following season, you can see Nuremberg in there again doing well. AEK in there, Basel and Cannes. Uh, in the semi-final, Nuremberg going through with Cannes, and in that final, it was Cannes that managed to win the most recent Champions League. They are the best team in Europe, I'm pretty sure of that. We'll have a quick look at Nuremberg, though, because they did win two Champions League titles in a row. They've also won um, a Bundesliga title as well, and if we look at their players and who they've managed to pick up, you can see why... Brandt, Sandro, Tar, Verratti, Kimmich, Henrik, Iwobi, Kondogbia. This is a sensational team. Easily up there with Cannes, but maybe not quite as good. Um, but they have managed to take home two Champions League titles as a result. Now, if we have a look at the uh, Club World Cup, if that's on here, um, we have to find the right search term here. Then you can see the past winners of the Club World Championship. Shangang actually won it the first season. Then it was Salzburg who took it. Obviously, Shangang had a brilliant team. Uh, SPO, oh, I mean, I hate it when they do that. That's Sao Paulo from Brazil. And then two titles for Nuremberg, the European Champions League winners. We have a look at just who made it to the final at least each time. In the first one, you can see Shangang were the team that made it to the final. They have got a brilliant team, or at least they did have a brilliant team. They possibly lost it because of the way the regulations work on the number of players you can put into a Chinese team. Uh, the following season, it was Salzburg who beat Chivas, and then Sao Paulo managed to beat Salzburg and get some revenge there. Nuremberg took it against Zhangzhou and then against Pumas in the most recent season. So at least we've seen a Chinese winner of the Club World Championship, which is not something that we've seen before. Um, and the European domination was broken also by Sao Paulo. But they have come back and started to win this. And some of those other leagues may be struggling. But this is a competition to keep an eye on. So... Drop a like on the video if you enjoyed this and did find it interesting. Let me know if you are finding it interesting and if you would like another part. If it is not of any interest and you've given it a second go, just let me know down in the comments and I will jump on to a different experiment next time. But if you are enjoying it, hit that like button. Let me know you are and I'll get another part out in a couple of days time. Make sure to subscribe for the experiments that are coming out every few days on the channel. Hopefully they're interested and let me know your suggestions down in the comments. But until next time. See ya.